What's up guys, Chris Schwartz Edmiston here from Schwartz Edmiston Web Design. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about starting your Squarespace website build from a style guide. If you wanna jump right to that part of the video, I have a time code below where you can do that. But first I wanna give a little bit of background. So for those that are gonna hang with me for this little uh, intro, you may or may not know that for the, about the past year and a half, I've only been working with other Squarespace web designers. Uh, I haven't been taking on any full web design builds myself. So um, web designers will hire me to help them customize their client sites. Um, and that also includes like site planning, anything like that. Because a lot of times clients will come to them with designs. And if you're new to Squarespace, you might not understand uh, whether that can actually be achieved in Squarespace or not. So I can work with the designer to kind of plan out how we would tackle that design. So I've been a lot doing a lot of those types of things, but I haven't really been taking on my own like full website build clients. But um, this is going to be changing because recently I saw this interview between Greg Hickman and Chris Doe of the future. And uh, Greg was running a, an agency himself and he was finding that he was getting really burnt out because each client that would come to him would ask for a really custom solution. And so he was having to tailor his services to each individual client. Essentially, whenever someone came to him, he would kind of have to be starting from scratch uh, and he would have to deliver a solution, to, a solution to that person. And then, you know, someone else would come along and then he would have to deliver a totally different solution. So he was finding that he was getting really burnt out. And so he started um, kind of getting on this kick of productizing his services, as he called it. Um, so basically he set up like a three-tiered structure of his services. So there's the done for you service where someone would hire him and he would build out a very custom solution to that person. But he raised the price on that because obviously that takes the most amount of work on his part. So he raises the price of that solution. The next tier down is this done with you solution. And so this is kind of where the productizing your services come in, comes in. So basically he uh, worked out his processes of delivering the service to his client and basically like got them down to a science. And so it became very easy for him. If someone didn't want to pay the top tier, he could kind of funnel them into this middle tier service to where everything is kind of already planned out and he can work with the client to kind of walk them through this system. So that would be like the next level, mid-level done with you service. And then he also created a uh, do-it-yourself style of his service. So basically that would be delivering uh, the product in the form of a course. So it would be walking the client through how they could basically do everything themselves. Um, so I'm just kind of summarizing this hour-long podcast here, but that's essentially the gist of it. It's all about productizing your services in a way that makes it so you don't have to start from scratch every single time you kind of have it down to a science and it takes away some of the draining aspect of running an agency out of the equation so this is obviously something that sounds really interesting to me and something that i'm going to be implementing in my own business so one of the systems that i'm going to be putting in place for squarespace web design builds is starting from a style guide um, and so that's what I want to talk about today. This wouldn't be the first step in my system of processes, but in terms of actually jumping into Squarespace and starting to build out the design, this would be the first step in Squarespace. So let's go ahead and look at the style guide that I've created and how I use it to kind of control all of the styles across my site. So the way I have my style guide set up is I have a trial site here just called styleguide.squarespace.com. So whenever I want to start a new site, I'm just gonna duplicate this style guide into a new trial site, and then I'm ready to go, uh, and I can update the style guide as needed for every new site that I start. So I have the style guide uh, as a folder here, and then I have the different pages of the style guide in the style guide folder. So the first page is the fonts and buttons. So basically, let's just look at the overview of how I have it set up, and then we can talk about actually changing the styles. So uh, we can see on this style guide, I have all of my fonts set out here so I can see the relationship between the size of the headings, the fonts, uh, and how they look next to all the other font types. So I have all my heading styles, and then I have all my paragraph styles, and then I have all my button styles. I can see what my inline links look like. And then I also added a line block uh, here as well, because for 
the site that I set this up for, I was using line blocks as underlines. So I wanted to see what the underlines were gonna look like. And I have each color style set out in its own section, which with each of the fonts repeated in each color style. So this not only allows me to see what my typography looks like in relation to each other in my buttons as well, but it also helps me see what each heading color and button color is gonna look like on each different color background. And so it kind of gives me just a 10,000 foot view of what the font styles are going to look like in any given section on any given background. So you can see I have all of my styles um, laid out here with every different combination of background color themes that you can choose. So let's say the client didn't like um, the headings being this gold color uh, against the blue. Well, I could just come to this dark bold color style and I could update the color for this section and then it would update for all sections across the site. So whenever I'm gonna make a change, I'm always going to make it to my style guide to make sure that all of my styles across my sections on every single page of my site stays consistent. So next we can go to the images cards page that I set up. And this basically just has every single different image card style in every different color theme. So Again, if I wanted to change the color of the button text on image card blocks in the light bold color style, then I would do that on this page to get it to look how I want it to. And then that would obviously propagate to every different section that I've used it on in the site. So again, this style guide is like a 10,000 foot view that you can take to look at the different styles on your site and kind of control them in one place to make sure that the design of your site stays consistent. It also helps you with writing CSS. So one, one interesting thing that I did, I had originally done this for a site, I had made image card backgrounds white. And the section that I was writing the CSS for was a section like this. And so obviously it looks good. Um, the text is legible, the card shows up with the background. For some reason there isn't a a design setting to change the card background color. Hopefully they add one. So right now you have to do it with custom CSS. But having this style guide <clears throat> allowed me to see that the CSS that I had written doesn't work for this dark minimal color style uh, because the text is white because the background is dark. And so that told me, oh my gosh, okay, so I have to write my CSS in a different way in order to have the text be legible. So I'm probably gonna create a video on writing theme specific CSS. So we'll cover that in another video. But again, the style guide is really helpful because you can see how your CSS is affecting different sections on different pages. Sometimes when writing custom CSS, particularly if you're new to it, it can kind of feel like if you're writing CSS for a particular page, you kind of hold your breath that you're you know, not making changes that are affecting something else on the site. And then to be sure, you might limit that CSS just to the one page, but then what if you want it to actually apply to multiple pages and then you're using a lot of collection IDs and it can get very confusing. So in this way, it can help us see how the CSS that we're writing is affecting uh, other elements on in other section color styles. Um, so again, I've just duplicated out every image card in every different section style. And if I wanna make a change, then obviously I'll do that on this page. Um, and then finally, I have a page for forms. And so if I wanted to make style changes to any of my forms or write custom CSS for any of my forms, I would make sure that when I do so, I'm looking at this page so I can see how my CSS is gonna be affecting the forms in every different color style. So again, this is just kind of a nice like 10,000 foot view where you can see how everything is going to look uh, in every different page of your site. So you could even create another page for like summary blocks too. If you wanna write some custom CSS for summary blocks, you can see how that's gonna look in every single different color theme. That's the setup, but let's talk about actually changing things and how you would do that. So <clears throat> I'm gonna to go to design and then fonts, and you can see kind of how powerful this is. So the way that the global textiles works is they have a, a font for headings, paragraphs, buttons, and miscellaneous. 
So now I can see that my headings and miscellaneous here in my style guide is set to Futura PT, and then my paragraphs and my buttons are set to Proxima Nova. And so if I wanted to change my fonts for my headings and miscellaneous, for example, I could come here in my style guide and just click on this header setting, and then I can change this, and let's say, no, let's change it to something completely different. Um, we'll change it to Baybass New. And you can see that it automatically changes all the different headings across your entire site. So this is a nice way to just control fonts in one single spot. Um, and so let's save that. And now we can also change our miscellaneous to Futura PT as well. Um, I would I would say you don't want to be loading any more than two different font families. Otherwise, that can cut down on your site's loading time. So let's change this to Baybass New as well. And hit save. And now we can update this to make sure that we have Baybass New as the font. So Baybass New... Can't remember exactly how to spell it. It's something like that. But you can see this is a great way to control the styles just in this one single spot for everything on the site. So really handy there. And then you could do the same thing for Proxima Nova as well. So not only will you be able to just see at a glance what you have loaded into the site, but a nice way to control the styling right there. And this is also good for writing any font specific CSS as well. For example, let's say if we want to change uh, the font size to 30 pixels. So you can see how that's going to look uh, across all headings on your site and how it's going to look in relation to all your H2s. So I really like this method for also writing custom CSS um, just because it gives you a nice overview of what those changes are going to look like. Okay, so that's how you would change typography. Um, and then the same goes for any button styles as well. Uh, if you wanted to change the color of buttons on the light minimal color style, for example, then I would just come here to my style guide and uh, go to colors, go to section themes, go to the light minimal theme, and I'll change the button background color to something in my palette. And boom. So now on this light minimal color theme, all my buttons are going to have that background everywhere on my site. So hopefully this helps you see how powerful a style guide can be. You can just make changes in your style guide and it'll automatically uh, copy across to every single section on every single page of your site. So really powerful stuff there. If you want this style guide, um, I can't really think of how to get it to people. I think I'll probably just have to add people manually as a admin contributor, and then you can duplicate it into your own dashboard, and then I can go in and remove you, and then you'll have the style guide in your site. So I will probably have to sell this as a, a product, maybe make it like 15 bucks or something, just because it's gonna take time for me to manually go in and add people and remove them, so I wanna be compensated a little bit for that. Um, otherwise, you can just build one out yourself, like it's, you know, it's not that hard. It just takes time to put it all together. So I definitely encourage you to just build out your own style guide, put it as a trial site. So then you can just duplicate it every time you want to start a new site. If you're going to use this system, let me know in the comments below. Uh, I would love to hear if you're actually going to implement this into your process. All right, that's it for me. I'll see you in the next one.